Hello, this is Dennis. I would like to show you how to create your substation configuration file with the SCT editor. Ok, let's begin. First we create our project file. We click on File, New, Empty Project Folder so that we can create our project folder. I have prepared a folder with the name Data and the, let's say, name of which in all projects include our project folders. Say OK. Our pr project folder was created and contains one empty project. Let's delete this project so we have a very clear start. This is notification. Do you really want to delete this? We say yes. Now we create our project with clicking on File, New, Project. Here you see our project path and I will add another folder that includes all of our project files. My name is project1. The same like our project name. Click on OK. Now the tool informs us that this folder does not exist. Do you want to create it? Yes. OK, we have created our project. So the next step is that we create our substation network. We click on File, New. Not new. We add. We add our substation network. Add new network. You see it will directly save to our project file and we will say substation network 1. The substation network was created. Here you see this is the file which includes all information in our project. We make a double click. And we go here to the right hand network. This shows all, all information about our substation network. The actual name is substation network 1. It has a different name like our file. This is the file inside of our project. And this is the name inside of our configuration. Next step is that we choose the infrastructure of our substation network. For this we click here. Now we can add some information and we say the multipliers m for mbit and the value for example 100 so that we have a 100 mbit network in our substation and that's all what we have to enter here until now the next step is that we add our icd file from the protection relay and this we will do this way we click on file add available id I click on open and now you see oh, our, our project is empty. There are no project files. So no problem. I have prepared some ICD files for us. So we will copy it from our template folder to our project folder. Now you see here there are two sub there are two protection device ICD files inside of our project folder and I will open the first. Let's say open. Now you see all information was ready to import. I say OK. Now the tool asks us that we want to add this protection relay to our substation network. We say insert into an existing substation network and we choose our network. Click on OK. Now the device was added and load into our substation network, but the IP address is not correct. So we have to change the IP address. We click here on IP address one two oh one zero two point one six eight point one point zero point one. This is the IP address of our protection device inside of our substation. For example, you can also have the 102 or some different name. This is based on our your uh, IT infrastructure. The next what we will add is the IP subnetwork 255.255.255.0. And also the gateway. Let's say the gateway is this when you connect to the internet or you have different substations or different IP infrastructures. For that, I recommend to ask your IT administrator. 192.168.1.1. 1. 
So now we have finished the network configuration. The next step is that we change the name of our device because template is a very unnice name. It's, if you have five devices of this, you will not never can you're never able to sever, to separate it. Please click on ID. You will see nothing. Now we will make a double click to MCA4 to our file, and now the complete structure was open. Now we will change the name template to MCA4 underline one. So we click here and say MCA4 underline one. Now the name of the device was changed inside of our substation configuration. The next step is that we will enter a report to our device. A report I will, let's say, explain in another video because this will be blow up this video and up. it's too much information to know what is a report what is goose so i will make different videos on this part i will only show you how to configure it in this kind of tool or let's say in this type of tool i will also do this in separate in other tools but this takes a little bit time Okay, let's enter our report. What we want to see in the first report is the position of our circuit breaker. So we go to control, because in control all breaker informations are together on one place. You see you have here the XCVR1, this is normally our, our first circuit breaker. Here you have the XSWI, this is the switch. And this both types in our tree contains the information that we need. In the LLNO, the logical node O, all data sets and report control blocks was, will start. We make a double click. So now you see this window has opened. Here you can enter a data set, report control blocks, logs, GSE controls and also for sample values. But first we want to add the data sets. We make here a double click on data set. You see we have added the data set. We will, now we will change the name of the data set. For example, data set CTRL1. This means data set in the control block and this is the first data set. Now we will add information to this data set. Very important to know is in data sets for report control blocks, we only insert data objects, no data attributes. I will, just, I will separate this a little bit later when I have reduced this big tree. So then you will see it a little bit more clearly. First, what we choose, we choose our area. We say we want to go to CTRL for control. The next step is we will choose our XCVR because I want the information from our circuit breaker. If you have more than one circuit breaker, you can choose it here. Next step is we want to have the position of the circuit breaker. So we go in this menu, lower to POS, POS for position. And here you have two data objects. I'm one, the first is the status of the data object and the next is the control function. Here we will sort it to status and what you see now is this one is the data object and the data object contains three data attributes but for our report control block we only add data objects. I mark this here and now we will add the next switch on, or let's say the information for the switch. So we go to here, and now we choose not XCBR, now we choose XSWI for the switch. You see, I've put here the filters, everything will be the same, but only have to change to the switch. I sort it to status, or let's say I sort it like the way it does and I also choose here the data attribute 
Now I have add all data objects to my report con to my data set, not the report control block, sorry. And I will say OK. Now my data set includes all information about the position of my circuit breaker and my switch. The next step is to insert the report control block. So we click here to add the report control block. You will see it was added. We click on it, so then we change some properties. The first what we change is the name. Report control one is not so clearly. For example, we choose report control, CTRL for control, and also one. The next step, what we do is we choose the data set. You remember we have created this data set CTRL one. Now we've choose it. This is this data set. Now we have linked this data set to this report control block. Or vice versa, this report control block to this data set. The next step, what we do, we will change the, op the optional fields. So that if this fields gives information about what kind of data will be also transmit. The config reference, the data reference, the data set name, the entry ID, the reason code why it was sent, the sequence number, and the timestamp. I recommend to enable all of these options to get no problems with the Scala systems because some Scala system needs types of these information, but normally they are not described in the, in the documentation. Next, what we do, we check the trigger options. Trigger options means the options why we have to send the new report to the Scala system. So we choose all of them, so we change all of them to true. Data change was on true, then data update, period update, and on quality change. These are the reasons why we send information to the Scala system on data change or data object, like the changing of the position of the circuit breaker. The next step is we will enable the report control block. Oh, oops. This will be easy if you have a double click here. And we will enter a unique ID of the report control block. For example, first device, like 10, and then the number of the report control block, 1, for example. May you want to choose another ID number, it's up to yours. It's up to four digits, more is not possible. And yeah, so that's all. We have created our data set, we have created our report control block. So now we are finished, we are ready to create our substation configuration file. For this, we have to add a new information, the substation information. We say file, add new substation. For example, we can set this name substation1. Because here we have information about the substation, like how many bays, what is the voltage level, and stuff like this, but for the whole for our configuration, it's not important. We want to create a data set and the report control block. But this tool will only create the substation configuration file if we have add the substation file. Now we can set say say project folder. It will tell us that there will be some warnings. You will see it here there are warnings, no errors. Now we can say yes, save. Warnings are not the problem. Warnings give only information that something is not so nice. It's not really a fault. If you have errors, you have to check your configuration because something is wrong and the file will not create because it will not work with the devices. What you see now inside of our project folder, we have here our ICD file. This is the project file and the network file and the substation file. And here you will see now our very important SCD file. This SCD means the substation configuration description. And this file you will transmit to your protection relays to give them the information for the substation configuration. Yeah, and that's all. I hope you find this video entertaining and educational. And I wish you a nice configuration in your future. Thank you.